Thank you for um, joining us this afternoon. This is Faith Formation in the Small Church with everyone in the circle. Um, we're defining small church as less than 100, so just kind of frame that in your mind. Um, and um, we have both those of you here in person, and then we also um, have our um, circle um, from online and on the screen joining us today. Um, and thanks to Mason, who's helping us make all this happen for GNTV, and for Catherine, who's going to monitor um, the chat for us. So those of you that are joining us online, you are invited to um, pose questions as we go along um, that we'll share um, with everyone. So my name is Sandy Safford, and um, I have been in Christian education for 25 plus years. I'm serving various churches and churches of various sizes. Um, I currently am a commission lay pastor and educator serving a very small church um, on the eastern plains of Colorado in Denver Presbytery, where I've also served medium-sized churches and one of the two largest churches in Denver Presbytery. So, um, one, um, I have experience in all three size churches which, um, I'll be honest, has made a small church extra special in my heart. I've served this congregation in Byers, Colorado for beginning my ninth year, and so we've really grown together um, to figure out how to do faith formation in the small church. Um, so um, just a quick show of hands, how many are educators serving your small churches? How many are pastors? And then we have some mid-council level. Oh, two of you, great, great. Um, volunteers? Excellent, thank you. As we know, small churches run on volunteers. And so thank you. online friends are also raising their hands for people. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you for participating in that. So um, anything I left out online or in person? Not to put anybody into categories. So in, in front of you, those that are in person and those online, you had access um, to our outline um, and handouts. So um, those of you in person just have a pretty broad outline. So if there's not one in front of you, grab one off a table that does. Um, and um, everything, so as we go through and I'll say, okay, so there's liturgy for this, or I'll say there's a script for this, those you can access by finding the PDFs under the workshops um, and and so know that you have access to those after you get back home this is intended for be a place where you can jot those notes down or if you springboard to another idea that you can jot that down but the meat um, all those extra pieces i might mention you can find in the pdf um, that are then posted so download those later even as you um, maybe need them. So um, having um, served a small church, I know that everything we do is faith formation. Everything we do usually, for the most part, has an intergenerational spin on it. Um, and so um, this workshop um, will focus on that intergenerational spin of how do we pull everybody in the circle, so all ages, all stages, but also we have folks at different levels on their faith journey. We have different, we have folks that have different understandings of what mission means. We have folks that are um, engaged in our communities in different ways. So, so start to think of that lens if you aren't already as we talk through some pretty much thematic ways to engage our congregations either in worship and or um, workshop type gatherings um, uh, that could happen anytime. This, none of this has to happen on the Sunday. None of this needs to happen in a worship context, but many of them can. So hopefully they're pretty versatile that you can say, wait a minute, I could put this, I could try this out here, or I could try this out here. Um, so I'm going to um, share with you um, several different um, 
Faith Formation Ministries um, and invite you to ask questions when we're there, um, as well as I'll pause between those to answer questions. And in a minute, I'm going to move to that microphone so I feel like I'm closer to all of you and that I can also see the screen. Um, but as we get started, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to back up. Um, so on the main tables, you'll see that there's kind of a visual display because I'm a visual learner, and so that's important to me. But I will invite you guys to have some, to help me out there, those of you that are at the tables, um, and, and just kind of wave them as we talk about them because um, for all of us to hear, I do need to use a microphone. And so, um, so if you'll help me in the teaching of the workshop, I'd appreciate that today. And then the stuff will be up when we're done so that you can actually get your hands on them and say, okay, what is this? Um, so they are displays, but they're also to help us in this as well. Um, so let me move to the other microphone. So we're gonna start with this table. And I'm gonna share with you first worksheets. So what a worship is, is just taking a worship experience, does not have to be um, like a Sunday or whatever your worship time. So um, I'm going to share with you worship model for faith or experiences, worship experiences. Worship is taking a worship-like liturgy, um, you know, walking through um, a, a order of worship, if you will, that is blended with um, a mission opportunity. And, and you can really be creative, the context within your own communities, and what that might look like. I'm going to share with you um, several that I've done. I've done, we've done several others. And, and we really just took um, what was important in our community and what was important to the worshiping community and said, okay, how can we engage in this experience? So I encourage you to, to think through that in that way. Um, and, and I've used them in a Sunday morning format. We extended our worship by half an hour, so an hour and a half. Um, quarterly, so not every Sunday, a quarterly emphasis. People knew that. People could leave if they wanted to, um, but it was almost like doing worship and a fellowship experience afterwards, if you will, and so we just combined it. Sometimes we started in the sanctuary and moved downstairs, the first space for projects, and I'll share some of those. Um, and other times we stayed all upstairs in the sanctuary and just moved to er different areas of the sanctuary. I've also done it as a Saturday night experience where um, folks came for an hour, hour and a half, um, and um, we participated kind of like a family ministry model, um, and that could be any day um, or evening. Um, so there's those two. So the first um, worship experience, well, all of the worship experiences have scripture and a message or reflection, some hymns or songs, um, mission stories, and, um, and if you pull those from your local or semi-local um, missions, um, that makes it very real. Then a hands-on mission project, and then um, being intentional about blessing the mission donations and the project. And then um, most of them also had prayer stations or practices so folks could move and engage um, on their own. So one that we have done, uh, Blankets of Love, also could be called Comfort and Healing. Um, and the theme of that one, love one another as I have loved you. And we based ours on um, uh, Project Linus. Um, Project Linus does come out of Colorado, so we had that advantage that it was a hometown story um, for us. But you could do it for uh, most hospitals will accept fleece tied blankets, but they may have specific guidelines for that. Project Linus has specific patterns and guidelines. 
Um, you can just, you could do, pick a senior center that might want lap, lap, lap blankets. Um, so again, identifying that project. Um, so we did blankets of love. We started in our sanctuary. We moved downstairs. I have a picture. We moved downstairs where we had tables similar to this, but two long ones put together. And we could put the pre-cut blankets on the table and put folks on all four sides. And then we shared mission stories while they tied. The, the worship pieces um, shared stories of how Project Linus was created which is a very powerful story. Um, some of you may know that we had um, the Columbine High School shootings, which when they happened, that was a rarity. Unfortunately, it's not anymore. Um, that was one of the first places that um, blankets were taken to every um, senior high youth at Columbine High School following that shooting. And so we had stories that were local for us. So I encourage you to find those. Um, we did um, Band-Aid prayers. So simply taking a Band-Aid, writing prayers for, for uh, others who needed care. I use the really big Band-Aids. Um, and then, you know, placing it somewhere where you'd see it. Um, so those kinds of things. Um, talked about what gives us comfort. Um, and in the packet... Um, that you can download. It gives you some of the liturgy, a full liturgy um, for the blankets of love. And then that mission project was tying the flannel blankets. Um, and then um, if you can, um, in, in one congregation I served, um, we actually then sent families to deliver those, um, which is an extra added piece. Yes. Uh, you bet. Okay, great question. So when I say we, who's part of my planning team? So, um, so in my small church, which is um, 22 members, um, it is a small planning group, um, but it does include, because um, what we found is this really overlaps ministries. So it's my worship elder. It is my uh, fellowship elder because sometimes there was food pre-COVID, um, and then it's also my Christian education elder. So there's essentially four of us, um, and then you're all interacting together, pulling in the congregation. Great question. Then um, we also have done, so a second one, um, is love your neighbor, and it was um, God is with us in the midst of disaster. And um, the lesson really was um, discovering where God is in the hard stuff, um, praying for those in need. And we combined it with um, a Presbyterian disaster assistance project. So we put cleaning buckets together. Folks had a list and they could donate items. Um, and we actually filled the PDA buckets um, as part of the project. And, um, and then also we talked about disaster tips for households. We actually had a backpack that we put together and demonstrated some creative and good things to have in the back of your car um, or have in your house that you could just grab if you had to do um, evacuate in an emergency. Um, and so the mission project was the cleaning kits. Um, and you can do those through Church World Services as well. Um, and all that information you can get um, by going to pcusa.org and then PDA. And, um, and I will say um, our folks got really invested in that. So um, I bought three buckets to be filled. So the big, what, 10 gallon buckets to be filled. Um, we had to go, we had enough stuff to sit in the corner to make um, a total of six buckets um, for this congregation. And so that was an overwhelming way for them to reach out. Uh, we also did one, um, this is probably my favorite one. Um, uh, well, Home Sweet Home, and I've also done this with a youth group. Um, homelessness 
issues, um, talking about the experiences, um, and especially in communities where it's not as much in your face, if you will, um, as in a city. Um, but um, God's challenge that we are to care for the least of these. And so um, in the language of Matthew 25, you could weave that in as well. And so we actually had cardboard boxes as our activity in the middle of the sanctuary, a tarp, um, a couple trash bags, um, a milk crate, and, so, and a couple pieces of duct tape and had um, four people come up and build a shelter and a blanket and have folks come forward and build a shelter. And then we talked about the myths, um, and, and all of those are in what you can download, but talked about some myths and had different folks share a myth, and we thought, is, you know, is that true, is that false? Give the facts, and then the facts were printed out on papers that then were taped to our shelter, um, and have that um, hard conversation of, you know, would you stay warm? If you were in this, um, uh, we have done um, pre-COVID, of course, um, served a bottle of water and a roll and a roll that had set out for a bit, even though you took it out of a Ziploc bag, um, to, to share um, some of those and have conversation around those um, experiences. And then the mission project for that was care bags. Um, so hygiene items, um, granola bars, and again, folks had donated those over the weeks ahead um, and or out of a mission budget. Maybe you can um, supplement, supplement some of that. Um, and so anything that would fit in a small Ziploc bag, and we just set up stations and let people go around and put a little bit of everything in, hard candies, whatever. Um, some people took those, um, although we're a rural congregation, folks do work in the city, and so they would take those, um, and so, uh, and others um, would keep them in their car when they went into the city. So a variety of um, pieces, uh, or of our variety of ways to serve outside of. Um, we also have put together, um, related to that, the PDA hygiene kits so the washcloth the other hygiene items and we have donated those for pda we also um, because we're in colorado and we are along i-70 um, our town is one of the towns where the highway gets closed into kansas and so um, our um, local legion hall becomes a shelter for those who get stranded and so we have made those kits to be handed out for those folks that get stranded. Again, serving the local community in addition to the larger community. And then um, this one is the one that I think has probably been my favorite, um, Hometown Heroes. And so thank you and blessing for first responders. And um, so we're a small town. Um, we have a volunteer fire department, which has one staff member. So we had conversation um, with the station house ahead of time and said, what are, the, what are some needs? Um, and they're like, you know, snacks. And so we made snack buckets, um, Gatorade, water bottles, um, granola, high protein snacks. And, and, and then, so in the, in the worship part of um, the flow of the workship, we um, had little cards. There's some that you can see just black and white cards, thank you cards essentially, and folks could color those um, with um, pencils and markers that were provided in worship, and those were then attached to, we just bought um, cleaning buckets, um, like a mop bucket, um, and we filled those with snacks and water and Gatorades. And then the best part which we were able to do is the firehouse is two blocks from the church. So when we were all done with our workshop experience, um, the majority, maybe two folks did not join us. Um, one drove, the rest of us walked across, or down those two blocks and delivered them to the fire station on a Sunday morning. And we of course had coordinated that ahead of time. But that had, and, and so we have a picture of um, all the folks that participated that 
with the first responders. There were about five of them that participated that day, all in front of the fire engine, in front of the firehouse. So it's one that really lasts in their memory because they did something for the firefighters. And, and to be honest, um, I f forgot about that story until just now. Um, I, I have a couple who lives right across the street from the church that's been part of worshiping with us for probably six years. Um, she unfortunately is, um, can call by name, not just because we're a small town, but can call by name the first responders because of the times that the ambulance has been at her house. And so that had extra special meaning to her to thank those who have cared for her and walked alongside her husband when she has gone to the hospital in, in, in the city. So I'm just throwing out um, a few of um, those experiences. Um, prayer stations, um, I, I use a lot of pictures. So when it was the disaster, um, I found pictures that would engage folks to thinking about what prayers they might lift up for folks in those situations. Um, we did a um, building, uh, building with hope, so adding bricks and, and taping those on the wall, um, words of hope that might be extended. Um, and, and, and then for um, one of these, for the disaster one, um, in the midst of worship, um, I handed out um, tiles, like you would put in bathroom tiles, just the four by four um, white tiles, and gave folks permanent marker, and invited them to just doodle or write words that came to them, especially as we read the scripture. And then we collected those. And I had a pillowcase um, that we put them in, and then um, invited folks to lift up words of brokenness and talk about what it means, trauma and disaster, and what are the emotions that are filled in that, like the anxiety. Every time they would share a word, I took a hammer um, to that bag. And at first it was, what is she doing? And then it was silent other than lifting up those words, those emotions. Then for one of the prayer stations, we poured out those broken pieces of tile and we had a cross um, frame of wood and it was um, that that they then glued on and brokenness into hope and created a beautiful cross. Um, with those broken pieces. And so, um, and, and, and that still sits in the church. Again, one of those reminders. Um, and you could do smaller versions of that too. Um, and um, we didn't have children, young children involved in that one. Um, so just be careful or aware of. Um, so even the adults were like, what is she doing? She's breaking up our piece. So just caution there to keep that in mind with kids um, that either have them help with maybe breaking those but that understanding that they get to participate if they're participating in the breaking make sure they're participating in the building of the cross you know that we haven't sent them somewhere else in the church so to speak questions um, things that have come to your mind regarding workshop experiences. Was that something that was already established at the church? Like, how did you go about presenting this? How was it received? How has it grown? Okay, great question. Was, were worship experiences already part of the ministry at the church? So, no. Um, and, and then, so, how did I go about presenting that? Um, great question. Um, I started um, with the session. We don't have a committee structure. If we did, I would have started there, too. Um, and, and just um, shared what this could look like. Um, and it wasn't received 100% by everybody, I'll be honest. Um, even my mission elders like, hmm. Um, so we're talking a small community church that knows how to worship, 
knows how to fellowship, but not all those other pieces. And so I was messing with worship. Um, you know, and, and I would incorporate music that fit, um, like God's got the whole world in God's hands, um, and do the motions. So it almost felt, um, you know, for adults, like we were doing a little vacation Bible school, maybe. Um, so I did take them out of their comfort zone. Um, so we did that slowly. So the first workshop we did um, was d the disaster where it felt a li I mean, that was something they could get around. Um, homelessness was like number four um, in a year's time. And so just quarterly, we did advertise them. We did say what it was. And we invited them to donate items ahead of time. So that kind of built up to that. Um, I will say, though, um, we, we, when we first did them, we stayed uh, upstairs, if you will. So our sanctuary, and then we have a fairly good spot on the side. And prayer stations were set up around the sanctuary. And so, um, so we stayed in the comfortable worship space. It wasn't until we did the blankets of love that we went downstairs. I did have one or two people leave, which is hard to do in a small church because everybody knows you're not there when you get downstairs. But if they didn't want to participate in the hands-on piece of the project, then that was their choice, and, and, it, and, and they were welcome to not be a part of that piece. Um, so, so thinking through those pieces. But definitely, you know, thinking of what that comfort level is. But I had to paint the picture and walk through what one would look like with the entire session beforehand um, and, and get them involved in that. Great question. Thank you. Great question. Right, so the mission projects in general are interwoven into the experience. They're usually in the latter part, um, in what we would probably call the third part of worship. Um, the blankets, for example, were kind of the second half, so we moved downstairs where the tables were already set up with the blankets, and I shared the mission stories while they tied. Um, and then what I forgot to add in here um, is when you move then to um, your um, blessings, your offering time, you're lifting up gifts of talents and time and treasures as well, especially the donations. And so we do a laying on of hands. So the blankets, everybody's hands on the blankets. Everybody's hands are on the cleaning buckets as you bless and pray over those. Um, you know, the, the snack buckets that then were the delivered. So, so it, usually the project flowed in that part of worship, um, but doesn't have to. Um, and your prayer stations can be mixed in wherever that feels like that works. Um, so usually it was flowing, um, and, and again, um, you have the full, but for example, so the blankets of love, call to worship, um, the hymn, I've got peace like a river, um, prayer of praise and adoration, assurance, time for the child and all of us, litany of comfort. And you have these in the resources, prayer for illumination, um, two scripture readings, um, a listening experience um, to a song. And then a short reflection, prayer practice, the band-aids, um, a prayer, and then tying the blankets that moved then to the offering, if you will, the laying on of hands, as share, stories had been shared while they tied, prayer of dedication, prayers for comfort and healing, kumbaya, and send them off. And you can play with that. Um, you know, the Saturday night program, we probably had less 
order of worship pieces. We welcomed and called. Um, some of the other projects, back to school kits and worked with um, um, a children's home in Denver that needed children uh, school supplies. You could also do the PDA kits for, for school. Um, a wide variety of different experiences that tie into your immediate community or, or an extension of that. Questions? Things that are coming to mind? Great, yes, yes. So, you know, mission folks might feel like you're taking over their projects. So working with them, maybe they've already got a project going. Um, so in one congregation, not the current one I'm in, but the one that we did on Saturday nights, we did that e exactly. So they actually were a congregation that had a monthly focus for their mission. And so when we were doing whatever month it felt we were doing, we'd already had conversation um, I attended the mission and peacemaking meetings to say, okay, so what do you have scheduled for February? And then they'd tell me what that mission was, and then we'd tie into it. Um, so thank you for lifting that up. Yeah. It, it becomes this nice team effort, hopefully, um, for those experiences. But I think, too, as many hands-on pieces you can do, to pull everybody into the circle, even if it's families moving together with younger children um, or um, uh, other adults jumping in and saying, oh, let's be buddies and let's work on this. So workshops. Then Advent and Lent have become those seasonal places to concentrate on a theme which takes some of those pieces um, which can be um, added into a worship experience and or like an advent workshop and several of these um, have been done in both of those settings so for advent so I'm move over here um, at this table. Uh, so Advent, um, I've, I've shared two. Um, one, the most recent, is Mary Had a Baby, which is um, the African American spirituals. We actually did this um, in t uh, Advent of 2020, where we were not singing as a congregation. And so we listened to the spirituals. Sometimes in the midst of the message, um, and I've shared the resource in, in the, on the resource list how you can access. Um, there's also one for Lent. I've not done that one yet, but there are um, uh, the same series. Um, this one took four um, African-American spirituals, and one of those is Go Tell It on the Mountain. We have handbells, the children's colored handbells that our congregation loves to play. Um, and so um, we actually use those throughout on this time of COVID when we weren't singing and still do now that we're back to singing um, with masks. And so um, our congregational response at the end of worship was for every one of those services was playing Go Tell It on the Mountain with the handbells. So there were, it was a great way to incorporate music and the understanding of spirituals, um, which have some very powerful stories. Um, and so um, we incorporated that. Um, easily could add worship, um, or sorry, um, prayer practices into, into that, weaving those into that, um, as well as even prayer stations um, if, if you do those in worship. And then the other, which I've done in several forms, is um, the journey to Bethlehem. Um, so um, journey to Bethlehem involved um, the worship experience, um, and as well as an Advent workshop. 
And in one form, it was one night with um, a Mary table, a Joseph table, a shepherd table, and um, it wasn't a baby Jesus table, a shepherd table and a what? Thank you. Thank you. I just looked. Right. Oh, and, and the innkeeper as well. And so the prayer station would be in the center of the table with all the hands on. So there was always something to hold in your hand, like a blue bead for Mary um, or a sensory piece, smelling um, a, a beautiful scent off of the rose petals that might represent um, the female aspect of Mary. Um, yeah, a piece of wool um, to think about a shepherd. Um, a rough piece of fabric for the shepherd, um, pieces of shaved wood for Joseph to smell, um, or a block of wood to hold, or to even pound a nail into to get that aspect. And then pictures that engage folks in those visuals. So those would be on the table. We also did it where one night throughout Advent, like a Wednesday night, the first Wednesday night was Mary. The second Wednesday night was Joseph. The third Wednesday night, um, the innkeeper, um, and, and do that and engage. The key piece to this one was pulling in our youth. So um, we had exactly four youth involved at the time. And so we invited them through our Christian education elder um, as well. Um, and invited them to be those characters, gave them a script. Those scripts are in the packet you can access. Um, and put them in costume and let them be part. So when we did it in worship, um, they were the message. And they would just wander down the aisle of the church and come forward and share their story. Did not make them memorize the script. And when you see the script, you'll say, holy cow, because... Um, it's several pages, but it's storytelling. So for Mary, she had a basket, and in her basket was her script. So we made it as comfortable as we could for the youth. So um, I think I shared, so this is a rural congregation on the eastern plains of Colorado. My shepherd that next fall won first prize with his um, sheep um, showed at the Colorado State Fair. So for, he opens up with his sharing. We did that intentionally, of course, because um, I knew his family had sheep. He wove into his script those pieces. That meant his first opening words were, shepherds don't dress like this, <laughs> because he really was a shepherd. Um, and, and the congregation heard him, there is no way I could have said the same thing and nobody would have heard it the way they heard it from Cameron as he shared it that particular Sunday. And so it was powerful. And I can tell you now, so it's eight years since we did that. Folks in my congregation can tell you who was which of those characters and they remember that advent. And I imagine those young people do too, in a, in a very powerful way. I mean, my young girl who was Mary was 14 at the time. Um, so that, um, and, and again, um, you know, sharing that, them sharing their story as Mary, as those characters, and then doing some hands-on interactive pieces um, with either a token that you then take home you know, you take the blue marble home um, and remember that we always put Mary in blue, right? No scriptural reason for doing that, but we do. Um, and those memories. Um, so doing that. Um, then for Lent, um, have also um, done several series. Um, one um, that I have done um, was Come to the Table. And um, that one, we actually, so this one um, incorporated um, that whole concept of um, all the table stories throughout Lent. So we put a black and white sketch on the front. 
And, and if even after we're done, if you look at some of our um, covers of the bulletin, those of you that can, um, some of the older ones have the picture of the church, which is our um, bulletin front. But then we started, wait a minute, we need to engage a little bit more. I'm not sure I found any of these black and white sketches of tables colored in, but there sure was that opportunity. Um, and so that simple concept. So the tables change. We took a simple um, cardboard, um, uh, not cardboard, card table, put it um, on the floor in the front of our sanctuary, and it was set um, differently every Sunday. So it was set to be a kitchen table. So it was very simple. Another Sunday, it was set to be the banquet table. So it was draped in gold and a chalice. Um, and so, so that changed. Um, we also celebrated the church's birthday, one of those Sundays in March, because we're um, 112 years old this year. And so it was a party table. It was a birthday party. There was a birthday cake on the table. And so there was this center. Our, we had readers um, to do the liturgy for Come to the Table. Um, we sang a hymn, Come to the Table. Um, I have this, oh, here. Um, Gifts of Love and um, Songs of Grace um, that take new words to common. And then we heard some today, or we, well, particularly today from... Um, that, um, from Mark Harris. And so, you know, a variety of ways to put new words, especially social justice words, if you want, or Advent and Lenten words, um, to those, um, to familiar hymns um, and incorporate those in there. Um, anyway, um, all of that, the beginning of worship, the call was all done by readers, and they would prepare the table. So they would light the candles. We used um, different candles to represent um, color-wise um, the Lenten, the weeks of Lent, um, and continue and to do that. Um, and um, in the bulletin too, um, so gathering at the table of God was the entry into worship. Um, God's table talk. Um, was moving into the um, message and then um, sharing God's table as we go out into the world. Um, so it really gave us a focus um, for our stories. I've also done um, the living water, so picking that theme of water. And... Um, sharing that and um, we did a Lent a prayer practice in the midst of worship usually followed the message um, and had a tangible piece for this one we had various different pieces of glass or beads that represented different things and on ash wednesday folks were invited to take um, a glass jar just a simple kind of dollar tree um, or go through your cabinets in your CE closet or kitchen. Um, and so everybody took a small glass container home. And, um, and each Sunday, we had a big glass um, bowl with the Christ candle in the center. And that's what was lit each Sunday, um, as well as colored candles representing sand and the palms of Palm Sunday. Um, so those visuals. Um, and then we had a smaller um, wooden cross with um, candles um, that could be birthday, can large birthday candles that could be added at home for that practice um, at home. Oh, what's on the table? Thank you, Catherine. Okay, nope, do. Thank you, Catherine, for doing that. Perfect. Um, and so, um, so it was practices that were in worship, and then they were able to take them home and, and then use them um, as, as devotional pieces at home. Um, 
Um, For the living waters, um, on Ash Wednesday, they got um, just a little glass, almost baby food jar, but not, if that makes any sense, but about that size. Um, and then they got this bag filled. And or, uh, and then uh, on, they only got the heart, so the glass heart was Ash Wednesday. And then they... Um, would get different ones that represented the different waters. So the wavy water was this bead that's long and skinny. Um, the woman at the well was the tile, and this actually matches um, a pre-done bulletin. Easter was the glass butterfly. So it took a little bit to find some of these, um, but I have an education elder who loves doing that kind of shopping and things. Um, and you just made it made fit what you needed to. But it was the pieces that then they would have in worship. There'd be a prayer practice around holding that particular bead. Um, water into wine was the little red bead. And so the prayer practice around that. And then you take it home and add it to your glass bowl of water. Share this prayer practice too. It, um, and I probably took this from a workshop so many years ago at APSI, so, and I don't know who to credit, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so, um, in um, the office supply section of any store, like um, a Walmart, Target, you can buy folders that are clear um, and cut them into whatever shape. So, we cut them in, you could cut them into hearts, you could cut them. Then you take um, a, a washable marker and invite folks to write um, for Lent. Might be sins, things they need to let go of. And then you invite them to come add them to water. Um, and then, as they leave worship, invite them to choose a person to take home. Um, because they'll be washed clean. The waterproof, if you use permanent marker, that's not going to work for you. <laughs> um, but you might want to use it in that way, too, um, in, in, a, in the reverse way of things to remember throughout Lent and to then take home with you, whether they're in water or not. Um, but that's kind of fun um, to use something like that that can wash it. Questions about Advent, Lenten experiences? And, and a worst thing that you've done um, that's coming to mind that you're like, oh, that worked. But really thematic. Um, for this Lent, um, our theme is trees. It's not fully worked out yet, but that conversation about the importance of the roots um, as well as the tree branches and the trunk of the tree supporting us. Um, and then it's the tree stories, you know, fig tree, um, palm tree, of course, um, the tree of the cross for Holy Week. Um, so just um, pulling out those stories and some of those stories we don't often, we don't always do. So we're digging deeper into some stories that we kind of miss, um, um, go over. Um, we left our Christmas tree up. It's, of course, fake, um, and it's good-sized. Um, so our, that tree's been up, not decorated after Epiphany, but that tree is still up, and then we're going to just gradually grow some other kinds of fake trees, like the ficus plant, palms, um, up front um, throughout Lent. Um, and people keep saying, why is the tree up there? Are you going to put hearts on that for Valentine's Day? And we're like, no, we're, we're moving through Epiphany towards Lent with our, with those. So Lent and Advent, I think, are ideal times to look at those themes um, and have some fun with them and incorporate um, some of the prayer practices or the hands-on interactive pieces.
So summer. Um, summer, we, would, we started to do gospel according to experiences. I needed the variety to mix up the summer. And I wanted to keep people engaged in the summer, not thinking that summer was a time to just go, to, to not come to church. Because when you have 22 people in worship and two families decide they're not going to do church this summer, um, you're in trouble, <laughs> right? Um, but even in a smaller church, I think you really can engage in these things. So um, we've done several um, our first one was Gospel According to Dr. Seuss. Beautiful social justice issues around those and lots of good resources. And the resources are on your resource um, handout. So um, the parables, um, Seussisms, a um, lot of good resources for that. Um, and you have some um, examples of some of the liturgy. Um, I would pull liturgy straight out of Dr. Seuss books. Um, like um, the cat in the hat comes back, I just pulled some of the call to worship pieces right out of there. Um, but some really good um, social justice, so green eggs and ham, uh, reconciliation, things like that. The Lorax, we would show the movie partway through. Sorry, two things. Oh, yeah. That's a great suggestion. I would just say to myself, I love these ideas and want to use them, but with streaming now and all and movie nights and things like that, you have to be very cautious yes. about rights and copyrights and all those sorts of things. So that's just something to be aware no. of because we had a movie night and we thought, we'll just show a Disney movie and have to pay five hundred dollars. Right. So that's just something to be very cautious about. Thank you. I would love to do all these things. It's yeah. How do we navigate that, especially movie clips now? Yep. And all that. Right. So thank you, Catherine. Yeah, that. So do be aware of that because, you know, that's right in front of us now. Um, and especially if you're sharing any of that live. So when we did most of these, um, we were not Zooming our worship services. So, yes, that is a great. So think about what that looks like. Um, and, um, and you'll see some of the bulletin covers um, are, you know, pictures or downloaded or cartoons out of the Peanuts books. Um, so um, I could not do, I couldn't get away with that legally now. Um, so that is my disclaimer too. And so, yes, be aware of that. Um, so um, Gospel According to Dr. Seuss, Gospel According to Peanuts, there's good resources for that. Um, Gospel According to Mr. Rogers, um, we needed to probably do that again. Um, yes, you have access to all that. So um, if you don't already know, uh, Mr. Rogers' day is now March 20th, um, designated day as of, I believe, last year. That falls on a Sunday this year. And if you haven't yet been to the marketplace, you need to get down there and visit um, the PMA, um, Presbyterian Mission Agency's Chris Office of Christian Formation. They'll give it you the card, there, and you can download all of that stuff for free. Um, so they've taken care of all those pieces and resources for you, which is awesome. Um, and you don't have to do it on March 20th. Um, Yes, it is. Right, and so um, we're not going to do, we're, I'm looking at the Sunday after Easter, which I think will be fun because it'll revisit the series that we already did. Um, I have done a um, gospel, I didn't give you those pieces, but a gospel according to Winnie the Pooh. That doesn't have as many resources, like uh, um, some liturgy and some background, so that took a little bit more work. Um, but I'm also willing to share those themes. Um, so, but what I did do, and even Gospel According to Pixar, um, picked some of the movies that I knew people had not seen. Um, and um, tried to pick movies that also would take some of my adults back. Um, I have a preschool director 
um, who worships with us as one of my elders. And um, he just had more fun seeing movies that um, he's watched with some of his preschoolers and or like uh, movies that he might not have seen with them. And so we did try to tie into fellowship um, and, and share some of those movies um, as we were able um, in that context, but remembering your copyright um, pieces. And so you have um, kind of those theme pieces and more of that information um, in the resources as well. Um, so I ran through a lot of that fast, um, but ideas that are, have been sparked, themes that are coming to mind, questions. Right. So, so, so not being a visual learner, yeah. you don't do much of that. And so you did the epiphany stars and their light and they were over the moon. It sounds like. And so my suggestion would be figure, find out who in your congregation is a visual learner and, and then say, okay, so what is mi when you're in worship, what's missing would be a start, you know, and it may just be as simple as changing out pyramids. So, you know, when I did um, Gospel According to Dr. Seuss, um, I had a cat in the hat that sat on the pulpit, not on the Lord's table. Um, I thought about that, um, and I got called on that. So I'll, I'll just tell you my learning curve right there. But on the pulpit was fine, or sitting on a sh shelf or a table. Um, but because that was an easy visual. When we did According to Winnie the Pooh, I had a member who had all the cute little characters. So we would, we would put them places in the sanctuary, but not on the Lord's table. Um, so yeah, but yeah, find somebody who is a visual learner and then say, what would you do here? And then, and then you know, even for adults, they like that thing in their hand. Um, especially if you're doing any prayer practice where you're asking them to sit quietly for a bit. Um, there's that sensual, that, that piece, and then taking it home, I think, is a reminder, too. I don't know what they do with them when Lent's over, um, but who knows. Threw a lot at you. Um, so after you digest some of this, all of you online and in person have access to the PDFs. Um, on the APSI site um, to pull the Mary scripts, to pull some of the sample liturgies for workshops and the worships and the gospel according to's. So. Oh, that's good to know. Good to know. So Winnie the Pooh, not the Disney version of Winnie the Pooh stuff. That's a shirt. That's Disney. You cannot use it. Um, but the original through the author, um, yeah, naked Pooh, a naked Pooh. Um, you can um, you can access those. Those are public domain. Um, but yeah, so know the rules. Um, and there are some authors. And I believe um, may, um, Peanuts, um, Schultz, thank you, um, has given permission for some. But I, um, I would reach out um, and, and ask some of those. Peanuts, cartoons are owned by Apple. Very okay.
Okay. So, so yeah. So, obviously, there's tricks to, or not tricks. Yeah. So, for peanuts, the actual cartoon peanuts is owned by Apple. So, steer clear. Um, however, um, the other parts, there, there'll be information in the books for a direct phone number and or website, I believe in some cases, for you to contact and ask for permission. Yes, yeah, sorry, yes, the animated, correct. Good clarification. Yeah, an animated, so yeah, great input. Well, thank you, um, and um, feel free to pick through what we have on the tables. Um, and thank you, Catherine, for giving our folks joining us online um, a visual of some of those. Um, my information's on the last sheet as well as on the resource sheet. Um, feel free to contact me if there's something else I can share that um, is not in the PDFs that you can download at your leisure. So thank you, thank you for lots of listening and, and quick learning. So. Oh, I have till 2.30. I am sorry. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to stick around, sorry, I totally read that wrong. Um, I'll just share a couple other things. If you want to leave, you're welcome to. And then let's wander around, and folks online, we can through uh, we'll camera. Try. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to show you some of the things um, and or just um, have some conversation with all of you. Um, so, um, again, I'd encourage you to find a theme that works for you. I've done Celebrating God's Harvest um, in the fall and picked up on harvest themes, um, Lord's Prayer, and we sang different versions of the Lord's Prayer. I had a couple solos um, of one in Spanish, um, which is very cool, um, Sermon on the Mount, and carried that over several weeks um, and incorporated hands-on um, prayer practices with that. Um, did a Lenten series that got cut short um, by COVID. Um, Come to the mountain, the mountain stories. Um, and um, I'm one who dresses the Lord's table. So we had foam that was cut out to be mountain peaks that was taped to the front of the table and then fabric, purple, bluish fabric would flow on that to look as like a mountain range. Um, for um, Come to the Mountain, invited, um, since we're in Colorado, invited folks to share stories um, of the mountain experiences. Not, and I don't mean mountaintop experiences, just experiences in the mountain where they experienced God. Um, and folks um, turned, the, turned those in to me prior to Lent. We put them together in a devotional booklet. And one um, couple sent me a couple pictures. One of their stories is about a rattlesnake. And so they sent me a picture, of this, and I'm like, wait a minute, now I have to have pictures for all of them, which we did. And it was very engaging because then you'd read it and you'd know who that person was. So that was another way to tie in a Lenten devotional with that series. So ideas that are sitting in anybody's, that have kind of rose to the top, or things that you have done to share. Excellent. Well, have fun with it. Because um, I, I think that's the bottom line of this, is being engaged and interact and have fun with it. Okay. Why haven't I been doing this all along? Right. Oh, wow. How about, how about you come up oh. and show them? This is, this is, this is more than I can repeat, and it's so very cool. 
So I'm going to give the mic away. So uh, a few years ago, I got together in the congregation a, a dancer, uh, an actress, a, um, a tile painter, and a pianist vocalist, and said, let's make a worship service. And we, we did a series of three services, uh, not in the sanctuary and not on Sunday morning, um, uh, where we took uh, Disney princess movies. We thought we were doing something for kids, and the kids didn't come, but, um, but it was still well received. Um, it, we, we paired uh, Disney movies and, um, uh, and uh, healing parables. So we had, with the beauty and the beast, the, the parable of the healing of the leper. Um, uh, with Frozen, uh, the paralytic. Um, uh, with... Uh, uh, Oh, uh, the Little Mermaid, the the deaf and uh, uh, blind, the deaf uh, mute man and the blind man, the stories that bump up to each other, and so so we use some you know non liturgical, non sacred music, but in the context of a sacred theme, and and we had some you know hymns or praise songs as, as well, but well, and so with that. You know, we had things that were movement, we had some drama, we had, we used, uh, you know, the visual arts as well. Other things that you might have done in online line folks as well, things that you've done that, to share? One, one experience I had with that was, well, you go to the session or you go to a committee with, with sort of an idea and they look at you like an idiot because you've sent, you've presented something that's not fully formed, you know. <laughs> you go to a group of artists with sort of an idea and they go, oh, yeah and work with it and so i just wanted to say that if you gather artists together now sometimes there are problems with that <laughs> but they're also very open to exploration and discovery and creativity together so thank you yeah that's an excellent point well and the question about the workshops and how do we present that you know i did take that to a session and say I wonder if we could try these workshops weaving in a mission project with worship. Um, and I got some dead stares, like, and I said, how about next session meeting, I bring you um, a service. I show you what this looks like. And so once they could see it on paper, and I still had a couple that said, I don't know if people will stay. And the first time we did prayer stations in the sanctuary, there were two people, including my mission elder, who just stood and had a whole conversation and never went to a single station. And I'm like, okay, but there's the freedom for them to do that. Um, and I don't know what their conversation was about. It could have been totally mission oriented, but that was okay because that was their comfort level. Um, and I probably had one or two people that would not come initially when we had worship Sunday, but we advertised it so they had that option. Because if they're not comfortable with it, I'm not going to force that on them either. But I can tell you that um, anybody who wasn't there for the heroes when we walked to the fire station <laughs> wished that they hadn't missed that Sunday. Because people really shared that one um, in particular. Um, one other kind of model, um, and I'll go grab those books in a minute, but um, Feast of the Bible, and we incorporated this with um, a Lenten study um, with um, adults that followed worship um, and the, all the resources, but that, vis that conversation about visuals. So it is the Jewish festivals, um, and we kind of put them in order so that we would, because it was Lent, that we would finish with Easter uh, or Passover and then 
now I'm going to test myself, first fruits maybe is the equivalent of Easter. Don't quote me on that. Um, and um, so unlocking um, the Feast of the Bible and then um, Feast of the Bible actually came out after we did that series. But like for tabernacles or booths, um, we built with PVC pipe um, a tent over the Lord's table and then we wove um, grapevines all over it um, and, and really had some fun with that. Um, to experience the Jewish feasts um, and their meaning of them and their significance to our Christianity. And so, I'm, I mean, that one's probably more adult youth oriented, but you certainly could find some places for kids. I just don't have that piece to share with you. how to hybridize workshops. So um, I'm going to put this back to all these wonderful creative brains around us. Um, I have not um, done that yet. As a small congregation who really has become smaller, um, we haven't gone back to our workshop, so I'm going to um, own that. Um, I think um, you'll want to do what what we've learned in this workshop, right, is that, for example, in the homelessness one, home sweet home, if you're having a team in your sanctuary or your space building this cardboard shelter, you need to have the camera on that. You need to be showing that to your folks that are online. So building those pieces in, um, I th my guess, and then I'm going to let you guys share, um, my guess would be that you, maybe you do, like we do Lent in the box, Advent in the box, let's do a workshop in the box. So send home some pictures um, for them to do the prayer practice with you. Send some of those tangible hands-on pieces. Um, send, if you're doing the heroes, send those cards that they can be all ages, could be engaging in that. Some people have some comments. Yeah, let's just. Uh, one person commented online that um, in terms of that hybridizing that uh, they brought they made at home kits in anticipation of the worship service and so the those who were there it says drop hybrid pack Martha says drop hybrid packs off with the stuff or many versions of prayer stations and all that sort of thing and that will be one way to do it um, another uh, said uh, worshipful work uh, who was this that said, um, I have to find, oh, where is it? So po post a supply list. Joshua said post a supply list for the activities and drop materials off or leave them um, available, make them available. Um, dropping them off at home uh, is another one. Kind of all of those things about making some at home. There was also one about making the where the pastor would stay in the worship space so that they could continue to interact with the at-home people while they went to a different room to go and do something else. You know, blessing bags, I think you could put together at home in what, you know, so after your time or you do a pause or you're sharing music or something and invite them just to go to their kitchen cabinets. Um, their medicine cabinet um, as a family and say, what can we share? You know, a few band-aids, you know, a drink mix, a packet of oatmeal, and then you're inviting those families that then go find a place to share that. Great question and great interaction on that. I come from a small church as well in the mountains of Colorado. In our congregation, we would not do a worship experience without those who were the recipients of our outreach there. Uh, that would be very important for us to see them, to meet them, to receive their thanks, and to let them see those that have uh, cared for them. And one of the congregations that we came from in New York, we were approached by 
uh, a Jewish couple that were looking to form a new Jewish congregation. And they asked us if we would allow them to meet on Saturdays in our facility, which we did. And it began a uh, friendship that resulted in many of their congregation attending our services, giving to us, they, they gave us uh, the, uh, the uh, wine serving cup and a, a cradle for the bread and we went to their services and we, we got to know much more about all those who are biblically our brothers and sisters and this was then um, made known within the community and we got a call from a progressive Muslim congregation said, could we use your facility on Sunday afternoons? So it's amazing how these things grow. And uh, so uh, our experiences um, have always involved those with whom we serve and those who uh, we are serving. So if you can involve um, those folks whom you are serving. Um, and, and I think that's a piece, too, that I think stands out for me for delivering the snack buckets is, is we got to be face-to-face -face with those whom we were, were gifting. I mean, sure, we could have said, you all go home after worship, and, and two of us, you know, the mission elder and I, um, drive over to the fire station and deliver those. But that is not the same thing. Um, so great. Other questions, comments? Thank you for your sharing. Thank you for um, your listening. Um, and thanks for joining us, folks, online. Um, so have fun with it. Um, and, and feel free to, to reach out um, for more information and or to share what worked for you and what you're doing. But have fun. Thank you, thank you.